because the style is like memory. It sometimes come to you in a disjointed and fragmented way. You know what I'm talking about. You think back and sometimes you remember an event and you think about the end of something and then work back towards the front of it. Or you remember a point in the middle of that event and then you work forwards and backwards uh, as the case may be. Uh, even small, odd details stand out in your mind for some reason. Uh, and it all makes sense to you, but to someone looking in, it seems confusing and bizarre. It's the same way when we watch a, a movie or read a book in which the writer doesn't give us a A to B to C story. The outsider is sometimes lost and doesn't make any sense to them. If your world has been overwhelmed and you just need to get away, you can rest in mind for a few minutes. Welcome to Todd World. Hello Seekers, welcome back to Todd World and uh, thank you for uh, uh, the views, the likes, the subscriptions and all of that. Uh, and uh, this week I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, the Read Harder Challenge. Um, is anyone doing one or is it like a New Year's resolution? You're like, yeah, I started but I'm not. Uh, or uh, or not, are you still going with one? Uh, did any of you pick on anything uh, in my list? Uh, I'd, I'd be curious to know. And uh, in fact, let me know what you're reading right now in the comments below. I'm just curious, it, whether it's my Read Harder Challenge or anybody else's and stuff. Uh, I've had plenty of time, uh, and uh, so uh, I think uh, I'm actually going to knock out 20 of my books by the end of this month. And so uh, I'll definitely probably be able to beat my 30 uh, goal this week. Um, I'll post my challenge below if you're curious and where I'm at uh, in it. Uh, I have the Read Harder stuff, which is on my list. And again, I'll post that below as well. Uh, and then I've got a, a, a TBR thing that I call my stretch goal or my SGs. Uh, and so uh, so that's how I label those. If you'll notice sometimes in the uh, uh, right after the uh, opening uh, intro. So, uh, But again, let me know where you're at. Uh, now, that said, uh, I want to talk about three of the books I've had uh, on uh, my list and that I've read this month that reflect a, a really a, a more postmodern perspective. And, and I enjoy the style because the style is, is like memory. It sometimes comes to you in a um, disjointed and fragmented way. Modernism, simply put, was a style of art and literature that emerged in the late oh, 19th and 20th century. It was an idea that believed the world could be understood by a large meta-narrative, or in plain English, by a sense that there were absolute truths that governed the universe. And through rationality, science, and technology, we could understand our reality uh, and explore it in that way. But postmodernism emerged in uh, probably the 70s, and it said to this point, yeah, no. Uh, in fact, postmodernists questioned our understanding of reality and said that the scientific and the technological really couldn't fully explain it or even communicate reality. Because, let's face it, the real world is messy and does not always conform or fit nicely into little scientific blocks of sanity. Postmodernism rejects the idea of a big picture and a clear-cut progression and conclusion. That when dealing with life, there is no grand truth and there is really no meaning in life. I, I know that sounds depressing, but the idea is that you get to decide your own purpose and not have it dictated to you. And really, the real tragedy in life is when an individual doesn't take the opportunity to find their purpose or their meaning for themselves. In one of my uh, TBR sections, I have an alternative life selection. And this time I read Lots by Brian Washington. And uh, the main character is actually a biracial gay boy growing up in Houston. And there are other stories that kind of come out of nowhere and intrude into the narrative, but it's really more about life in the city. Uh, but for the most part, this is a, a story about this young man who deals with family and life and circumstances that just are pretty gritty at times. And to me, this is a powerful work that really kind of gives us snapshots into this young man's life and those around him, but really doesn't give us 
um, a full-blown storyline to follow. It's just more about him and the circumstances he's living in and what's happening to him. Really, it's about people just trying to survive in life. You know, real people are neither good nor bad. Uh, they're just people who, who are simply trying to survive the chaos of life around them. Uh, and it is a work that provides no absolutes nor solution. It doesn't even give us any closure in the sense that there's some kind of happy ending. But that is postmodernism because to a certain extent, that's life. Sometimes we may have some closure, but there's not always a happy ending. Postmodernism recognizes that two things can be true and false at the same time, uh, depending on the situation and the context and even the culture. I mean, is it wrong to kill? Well, yes, it's wrong to kill. Do you support a just war in which killing takes place to defend the innocent? Well, yes. Well, well, wait a minute. Is killing right or wrong? Well, see, again, it all shifts and changes based on our perspective or the situation or the context and even to a certain extent on your subjective opinion that's shaped again by other factors in your life i mean have you ever sat in an airport and speculated about the lives of those around you strangers you've never met and you look and you wonder wonder what's going on in their lives sometimes you overhear stories good things bad things and you think wow these people are going through this or wow they're going through this and to a certain extent it's that moment when you realize that you are not the center of the universe yes you're the center of your universe but not the center of the universe and there's a big difference uh, people around us all have their own stories you have stories that I don't even know about y there are stories in my life that you don't know about some of you do um, and the thing with this is all of us are dealing with situations some of them world-shattering some of them are, are great and are amazing things that are happening to us but really when it boils right down to it some of that stuff really isn't important to us or me uh, or you. I mean, I could tell you this really cool thing. And if you're a friend of mine, you think, hey, that's great, Todd, and stuff. But some of you looking in is like, mm, who cares? It's not my world. It's not my subjective. And to a certain extent, many people come at life differently with different positions, different ideas of right and wrong and what's real, what's not real. And to a certain extent, that's why we have so many different perspectives. And of course, everyone thinks theirs is the correct one. Uh, you know, unless some traumatic incident happens in which they're forced to change their mind or opinion about something, or maybe some people are actually more open-minded to be convinced that they may be wrong about something they've always believed. It, it's sometimes difficult. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I admit that I have been wrong in the past. In fact, because um, I remember a time when a situation came up and there was a discussion and I, I actually thought I was wrong and, and I wasn't. Flights by the Polish writer Olga Toborczyk uses her travels to kind of illustrate this and she uses the theme about uh, people traveling through airports and things like that and the airport itself is kind of a, a link to strangers who have stories and turn around and spiral into other stories, which some are even historically based. And it's almost like going down the rabbit hole. Uh, again, all these people are living their own lives and where everything is important to them, but nobody else. Uh, where reality is not what you thought it was or your values are challenged and uh, you have to go against them, uh, maybe for the right reason. This is a work that has great language, great uses of phrases uh, to communicate uh, the different experiences of people in her stories. Postmodernism is also nonlinear. Uh, it recognizes that a story does not have to be told with a simple ABC progression, that the point of the book or movie that you're maybe watching is the experience or or the moment, going backwards to establish relationship, but then skipping forward to emphasize a theme or a motif. Bring Out the Dog by Will Macon is one of the other books that I read in this challenge, which is the story uh, of a soldier in the Afghan war. Uh, but then again, the story jumps around. It goes back and forward. And the focus, again, is not on a narrative or, uh, or a happy ending or an anti-war book or a pro-war book that glorifies war. Uh, it's the, the point is about experiences that this soldier and his team have 
uh, in life and how they reflect on each other. Uh, and it's, it gets us inside the, the, the character's mind to explore these events uh, in sometimes a surreal way. Uh, and again, uh, it is a style that seeks to see life as it really is. Because the style is like memory. It sometimes comes to us in a disjointed and fragmented way. This book, like the others, deserve to be prize winners because of their ability to use language creatively and powerfully to make you stop and savor what is being said, even if it's about realities that differ from yours. Uh, and, you know, those who just blow through it, I don't know if we'll appreciate it as much as I did. Because uh, remember, reading should challenge uh, our reality and allow us to be in others' realities to explore it. And thus allow their reality to shape or modify our reality. Because in the end, <laughs> all we really have is our reality. <laughs> anyway, to my cubs, wherever you are, I miss you and I love you and I will see you soon.